Okay, um, just to give you a little bit of an introduction, Network Consulting Services is a platinum partner of Imperva and we specialize in designing and implementing data security systems. Joining me today on the webinar is Todd Troutman, the Senior Development Operator or DevOps Manager for Qualpay. They're a large credit card processing company and Devir Shapira, Director of Product Management for Encapsula at Imperva. Uh, for those of you that may not be in, familiar with Imperva, uh, Imperva is the market leader in web application firewalls and database protection. In fact, in your research, you'll probably find out that Imperva holds the extremely rare position of being the only web application firewall company in the upper right-hand quadrant of the Gartner Magic Quadrant for web application firewalls, and has held that singular position for two straight years. Uh, in addition, Imperva is a market leader in database access monitoring blocking and blocking suspicious user behavior. Uh, this is incredibly important in the credit card processing world. It's data mined from credit card database breaches is some of the most valuable data stolen and, and, and available on the identity theft market. In today's presentation, we'll cover how to protect data across the heterogeneous environments. In addition, we'll discuss how that relates to PCI compliance. First, we'll hear from uh, Mr. Todd Troutman from Qualpay. Uh, Todd will describe the issues that Qualpay needed to address and how Imperva was able to help them with it. Following Mr. Troutman, Mr. Devere Shapira will, uh, from Imperva will describe in more depth the Imperva solution. It's my pleasure to introduce you, Mr. Todd Troutman. Todd, take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Troutman. I'm a DevOps guy at Qualpay. Equalpay is a modern cloud-based payment processing platform that combines the roles of acquirer, processor, and gateway. So we originally came into this WAF market looking for something to meet the PCI requirements uh, because, as you know, the alternatives are that you can have uh, third-party um, software analysis done, and that's very expensive, very time-consuming, and slows everything down. Um, Encapsula has had no problems meeting the PCI requirements at all, even through log storage. Uh, they have an excellent API that lets you offload logs and store them and the uh, log storage for compliance uh, method of your choice. Um, we really just wanted to meet the requirements for PCI at first, but it turns out that we were just incredibly happy with the tool. It's very, very effective. It's got excellent analysis features in there to dig in and see you know, why something was blocked, um, what needs to be blocked. Um, it's very, very good stuff. Uh, the reporting, alerting, and event search interface are fantastic. Uh, the support experience has been really amazing. Um, it's they've been fast and efficient and accurate without a lot of back and forth and having to re-explain things again and again. Um, they've even been able to do things for us like go ahead and implement uh, TLS 1.2 only, uh, even though that is not available in the UI. For the customer to configure, they could make that change for us on the back end. They did it much, much faster than I thought was possible. It was like a one-day turnaround, and it was done. Um, the deployment has been extremely easy, um, and we're about 1.5 years into using the Capsula service now, and external monitoring has never shown that we had a failure introduced into the path into our environment from Encapsula which was one of my concerns because that's another, it's a critical path service into the environment. Um, but monitoring has never picked up any failure of the encapsulated environment. Um, so our, we've never had any, you know, any errors there that cause customers to not be able to get to our service. Um, and that's about all I really had on my list of things here. Um, were there any questions from the attendees for me? I haven't seen any come through yet, but uh, I will keep monitoring them as they as they go through, and I will introduce them. So, uh, Todd, appreciate your time uh, as an introductory, and uh, we'll turn it over now to Mr. Shapira. Give me just a second, and I will add you as the presenter here. All right, Dev, you should have control of it now. Uh, yeah, in just a second. Let's see. Can you guys uh, see my screen now? I could for just a second. Did okay. you stop sharing it? I guess. Oh. Can you now? Yes. 
There we go. See your whole whole desktop there. Okay. Um, okay. So let's let's do it like that. So uh, I'll move to presentation mode. Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dvir Shapira. I'm leading the uh, product management team of the Encapsula, Imperva Encapsula uh, product here in the US. And I'd like to talk to you uh, today a little bit about uh, how Encapsula can help you uh, uh, improve the performance, security, and availability of your uh, web applications and infrastructure, and also explain how the Encapsula solution helps you meet PCI and other requirements, how we handle uh, PII and other sensitive data, uh, and how we also manage uh, data distribution across our network. For some reason, I have here a, a OK. So, um, Let's start talking about Imperva Encapsula. Imperva Encapsula is a product within the Imperva portfolio that is completely cloud-based. It's a SaaS solution. Uh, and we usually think of our product as a product that solves operational problems for our customers. Uh, we solve security problems, we solve performance problems, and we solve availability problems. Uh, by mixing uh, different products within a single platform, we can secure, protect, and accelerate our customers' uh, web applications and infrastructure. Uh, now, the way of oh, sorry for that. Okay. The way we do it is uh, by providing uh, a few different services. Uh, directly from the cloud on a SaaS platform. Uh, one service is what we call website security, which is based on a cloud WAF. Uh, it's kind of similar to, to SecureSphere, to the Imperva appliance-based WAF, but it has quite a few differences that make it unique, and I'll explain about this uh, in a few minutes, but it also uh, our website security service also offers, uh, I think, the most advanced bot protection uh, uh, service that I know of. Uh, uh, there are a few companies in this space, but I think Encapsula has the most advanced uh, uh, bot protection service out there, and I'll explain about it uh, again in a few minutes. Uh, the second service is our DDoS protection. And it's the most comprehensive DDoS protection service out there. Uh, we can protect your infrastructure, uh, your web application servers, DNS servers. Um, so it's very comprehensive uh, based on a platform that can do 2.2 terabits per second of DDoS mitigation. And again, I'll, I'll talk about this uh, uh, in, in a few minutes. The two other services that complement our SaaS platform are our CDN and Optimizer. Uh, our platform is basically a CDN, a content delivery network, that allows us to cache and optimize and accelerate traffic and serve content close to the end users. And the last piece is the load balancer. Uh, we built our own proprietary cloud-based load balancer uh, really state-of-the-art load balancer, doing everything on layer 7, health monitoring, load balancing between uh, servers and data centers. And again, I'll explain about it uh, later on. How does it work? So basically, uh, just to put it simply, uh, protecting and accelerating web applications is being achieved by our customers making uh, DNS changes. Uh, so they need to use the Encapsula CNAME and A records to point traffic at the Encapsula cloud. This traffic is, is being scrubbed. 
is being uh, inspected for malicious activities and also being accelerated and cached uh, and load balanced in front of the origin server. So let's talk a little bit about our uh, web security services. As we all know, uh, web applications are vulnerable to attacks. Uh, research shows that 96% of web applications have embedded vulnerabilities. I really don't know almost any applications that haven't been vulnerable to uh, attacks from time to time during uh, uh, updates or patches or whatever. Um, and almost, and there are two solutions to uh, solve this uh, uh, inherent vulnerability. One, write secure code, which is the best practice, but uh, most of us cannot follow up on this and, and make sure that all of the code that enters our applications is completely secure. The other option is placing a web application firewall in front of our applications uh, to protect against all sorts of attack vectors that are aiming to uh, 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 use those vulnerabilities to either steal data or uh, do damage, like defacing applications, etc. Um, so I will address this in a moment, talking about our own web application firewall. But I want to address a second very important challenge that web applications face, which is that surprisingly, almost half of the visitors to the average website or web application are not even humans. Uh, <coughs> they are bots some of which are good bots. And you can see here the, the pie chart on, on the right-hand side. Almost 20% of the total traffic to an average site is good bot traffic. And when I'm saying good bots, I'm referring to bots like the Google bot that indexes your site or application. Uh, and of course, Bing and, and other search engines, but also monitoring services and other SaaS services that are, using God, uh, that are using bots. On the other hand, we also have bad bots that consist uh, 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 at 29% of the average site uh, traffic it consists of, of bad bots. Uh, and bad bots are, there's a huge mix of bad bots out there, some of which are common spammers that just spam sites some of which are scraping bots that try to steal data from sites and place it uh, in, in different places. Scraping is, is a huge challenge for classified ads applications, usually, because competitors always try to uh, steal data and ads from, from their competition. Uh, and lastly, uh, bad bots can be uh, scanners that can millions of websites for vulnerabilities trying to attack them later on, or just plain attack bots that perform DDoS attacks or SQL injection attacks, etc. cetera. Uh, all of this information is usually uh, not visible to the site owners or to the application owners. Uh, and Encapsula opens up this visibility into uh, this whole new world of who are your visitors, and, uh, and mostly the part about the bot visitors that your site or applications have, and also can handle those bad bots and good bots and define policies to uh, uh, mitigate any malicious activity that's being done there. Let's talk a little bit about the Imperva Encapsula security model. Um, so Encapsula, Encapsula is built uh, is, is using a layered approach to security. The outmost layer is a, a very simple, straightforward layer of access control that allows our customers to block uh, IPs, countries, regions, uh, block access to specific URLs, etc. It's a very important layer for our customers <coughs> because they can make use of it 
uh, to uh, sort of uh, uh, limit traffic from unwanted areas or regions or IPs to their websites. And it also allows them to have a concentrated control over the security of their uh, websites and web applications. The second layer is a very important layer and contains a lot of proprietary technology that was developed in-house. <clears throat> and this is the bot mitigation layer. I just discussed uh, bad bots and good bots. Encapsula built its own <clears throat> very, very advanced uh, client classification mechanisms based on uh, very advanced algorithms that were developed in-house and allow us to classify clients very, very accurately. Uh, whether those are bots, humans, uh, we can classify, we can uh, fingerprint their devices uh, to a great accuracy, which allows us to A, block all malicious bot traffic to your websites and web applications, and B, at the same time, uh, keep the false positive rates very, very low. Uh, our false positive rates are under 0.1%, uh, just presenting CAPTCHA challenges to humans. I'm not even talking about blocking anyone. Just pre presenting CAPTCHA challenges to humans uh, happens 0.1% uh, of the time. So this is a very low false positive rate, and we developed a lot of tools to allow us to achieve this low rate. Just as a comparison, most of our competitors will do 10, 20, 50, and even sometimes 100% uh, uh, false positives presenting CAPTCHAs to and each and every user uh, that is trying to access the, the site or application during an attack. The, the next layer would be the WAF layer. So let's say we stopped all malicious bots and malicious bot activity on the previous layer. Now we have humans that are get, uh, getting access to our website or web application, but some of those women can also, humans can also be malicious. Uh, hackers, uh, hacktivists, whatever, that are trying to steal data, deface sites, or whatever. And for this reason, we have the WAF, the Web Application Firewall, that will block any hacking attempt, any OWASP top 10 type of attacks. <clears throat> and this WAF is actually, in many aspects, similar to the Imperva Secure Sphere WAF, the uh, on-prem appliance-based WAF, but in other terms, is a bit different, and I'll explain in a few minutes how. The last uh, layer is the layer where the, the customer or the web application owner can uh, customize our security policies to meet their own web application or, web, uh, or, or website uh, business needs and business applications. Uh, so for example, our customers can write custom rules that allow them to limit access to a specific rate, to a specific resource on their website because they know that this resource shouldn't be uh, accessed at high rates, for example. Or they can limit access to this resource from specific countries uh, at a given uh, uh, time of the day. So uh, it allows a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, granularity and customization. Uh, the web application owners can also uh, decide that they want to present CAPTCHAs or JavaScript challenges to specific types of, of visitors. So it allows a lot of uh, flexibility. Two uh, other, I think, very important uh, uh, services that we offer on top of our platform are uh, built-in two-factor authentication uh, uh, service that allows customers of ours just with a click of a mouse to add uh, two-factor authentication to any given uh, URL or URL or, or area of their web application or website. Uh, it does not require any coding, any integration, anything. Just uh, logging into our portal, uh, clicking a mouse, defining a URL, and, and uh, this area uh, becomes 
two-factor authentication protected, which is a huge challenge now with uh, more passwords and credentials being stolen. Uh, another capability that we offer our customers is backdoor, backdoor detection. So backdoors are uh, what hackers implant on web servers once they get hacked. So we have customers that got hacked even before they joined our service. The, um, the hackers implanted backdoors on their web servers and can then just access those uh, uh, through the backdoor and perform all sorts of actions, steal data, um, uh, deface applications, use web servers to attack other web servers as parts of a botnet. Uh, now, Encapsula developed its own technology that allows us to detect those backdoors uh, using uh, just by uh, listening to the communications between the backdoor and the operator, and we can allow the, the, the web application owner to uh, quarantine those backdoors or to remove them completely. Now let's talk a little bit about why the Encapsula uh, product offers better or very different uh, uh, web application firewall capabilities than an appliance-based on-prem web application firewall and why this is uh, superior to any other product that you will find in the market. So Encapsula is now serving over 160,000 websites and web applications uh, of our customers, some of which are very high profile uh, from very large companies, uh, uh, Fortune 100 companies. Um, and we see terabits of traffic and millions of attacks a day which gives us a, a very unique visibility on the web attack landscape in, on the internet. So most, for example, IP reputation feeds or other services use uh, honeypots to try and attract malicious traffic and, uh, and therefore be able to build IP reputation lists and signature lists. The fact that Encapsula is looking at real traffic, going at real sites, gives us a much better visibility on the web attack landscape because uh, honeypot-based uh, uh, IP reputation lists are usually skewed because traffic that goes to honeypots is not exactly the same traffic that goes to regular websites and web applications. Now, the fact that we have this kind of visibility allows us to build the most updated and the most accurate uh, IP reputation list, and also uh, this combined with our client classification mechanisms allows us to also buy, uh, build the most updated and the most accurate client signatures uh, database. So the combination of these IP reputation list, client signature database, and WAF signatures allows us to usually stop most attackers at the front door before they even try to do anything fishy or try to attack the application, which is very unique to Encapsula. And all that uh, uh, being achieved with a very, very low rate of false positives, which is always a challenge for uh, web, uh, for any security uh, uh, products or services. Uh, now, another advantage that we have as a cloud-based service is, first of all, of course, ease of use and ease of, of deployment. There is no hardware or software required, and it can be deployed in just a matter of minutes. Uh, we sometimes uh, provision sites for customers that are, are used to doing business with uh, the likes of Amai or other services and are used for used to uh, deploying sites in a matter of weeks or even months. Uh, with us, it takes minutes. It, it, it always amazes customers how quickly and how easily this can be achieved. Uh, and also, uh, we have a team of experts behind the wheel which allows uh, us to offload 
many of the day-to-day uh, -day ongoing tasks that our customers are handling in terms of security, either their own security teams or uh, operations teams are handling such as uh, uh, mitigating common uh, uh, malicious bot attacks and also uh, uh, creating rules, WAF rules, and verifying that the false positive rates are very low. Uh, so for example, when our security experts uh, add a new rule to the system, they have a process where they uh, run this rule across the entire network on alert-only mode for a couple of days and, and inspect uh, the hits of the rule to make sure that there are no false positives. And only after that, they apply the rule uh, across the network. So we have a lot of uh, tools and expertise uh, that allow us to maintain the very low false positive rates that we have. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, DDoS protection. Um, so the trends that we're seeing for the past few years now have been trends where um, attacks are getting larger and larger across time. Uh, we see 100 plus gigabit uh, per second attacks every other day now, or even sometimes even on a daily basis. Uh, this was like science fiction a couple of years ago, and it's a reality now. And we're going to see much larger attacks uh, in a couple of years, or even uh, in a couple of months. Uh, and the trend that we've been seeing uh, recently is attacks shifting from uh, bandwidth-oriented attacks with uh, large gigabit per second counts to uh, packet per second oriented attacks. So we've recently seen attacks as large as uh, 300 or 400 mega packets per second in size. You can see here on the right hand side uh, a screenshot of uh, one of our internal monitoring systems showing an attack uh, on one of our customers that was 330 mega packets per second in size. These are huge attacks. There are almost no uh, uh, services uh, worldwide that can handle this amount of traffic in terms of packet per second. Actually, our own tier one ISPs, the largest ISPs uh, in the world that carry the backbone of the internet, were facing challenges with some of those attacks. Uh, and we asked them uh, and we worked with them together to move our traffic to dedicated equipment and very strong equipment on their side and dedicated networks on their side to allow us to have end-to-end -end, uh, capabilities in terms of large packet per second attack mitigation capabilities, which is the future as we see it. We see attacks becoming larger and larger in terms of packets per second. Uh, attackers understand that this is a vulnerability for almost all DDoS protection services and will try to leverage that uh, uh, to uh, attack sites and infrastructure. So let's talk a little bit about how Encapsula handles uh, DDoS. So we have the most compre comprehensive DDoS protection solution out there. Uh, it's actually uh, um, uh, built from three different services or layers. One is what we call infrastructure protection which protects entire networks uh, and, and infrastructure. We have two flavors of this uh, uh, infrastructure protection service. One is our infrastructure protection service that is, uh, requires our customers to have C-class ranges uh, and, is, and can take the form of an on-demand service or an always-on. So either we protect our customers 24 by 7 or they can switch over traffic to us when they get attacked. But the other flavor of this is what we call IP protection, which is very unique to Encapsula. Uh, we built uh, this technology uh, uh, to allow us to be able to provide an IP-based 
uh, infrastructure protection and we filed a lot of patents around this. We have a, a lot of cool technologies involved. Um, and this uh, uh, service actually allows our customers to protect single IP addresses. So customers that don't have a C class range or that don't want to switch over an entire C class range uh, to Encapsula when they get attacked can get an always on 24 by 7 DDoS protection uh, for one of their IPs, one or more of their uh, origin IPs. The second service that we provide is our DNS, ser DNS DDoS protection service, which protects DNS infrastructure against uh, uh, DDoS attacks. Uh, and it, it protects DNS servers from both network layer attacks, same as infrastructure, our infrastructure protection service, but also against DNS-specific attacks, sort of layer 7 attacks against DNS servers. Uh, our third service is our web application protection service, which protects web servers and web applications against any type of DDoS attacks. We, uh, uh, whether those are layer 3 and 4 attacks or application layer attacks. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, a 2 terabit per second uh, mitigation capacity over our network, uh, one of the largest in the world. We are aiming at getting to 4 terabits per second by the end of this year. Uh, we provide unlimited protection to our customers. Uh, we only use, this is very unique to Encapsula. Encapsula built all the technology that's being used by us internally, uh, software, hardware, algorithms, everything from scratch. All of our competitors are using third-party solutions uh, and are just providing services over those third-party solutions, whether those are uh, open source WAFs like Mod Security or uh, DDoS scrubbing appliances like Arbor and Radware. Uh, Encapsula built its own technologies uh, and it allows us a lot of flexibility, allows us to react to new attack vectors, to new botnets, uh, add them immediately to our databases and protect our customers within seconds and not within months. So uh, that's a very unique uh, feature of Encapsula. Last but not least, uh, we have a team of experts, 24 by 7, and NOC, and a SOC, a network operation center and a security operation center, uh, manned by very experienced engineers that can handle any types of attacks uh, in real time and also provide detailed reports and uh, analysis and fine tuning for policy. Um, so th these are just some general statements on our um, uh, DDoS capabilities. Uh, one important thing is that they are all automatically activated as opposed to many of our competitors that require uh, their customers to uh, hit a button or call them whenever they get attacked. With us, everything is completely automatic and the, the reason for that being our very low false positives rate. So many of our competitors are uh, uh, will not automatically activate their DDoS mitigation mechanisms because they know that those will create very high false positive rates and a very bad user experience for their customers. So they require their customers to notify them when they're under attack um, while Encapsula doesn't require that because we have such a low uh, false positive uh, rate and we'll just automatically activate it all. Um, okay, we discussed this briefly. Uh, application layer uh, DDoS is becoming very important and very significant um, and application layer attacks require a lot of uh, technology is both from the attacker side because they're coming up with new bots that are more sort of human-like and, and that can impersonate browsers better and are much harder to detect and require us on the mitigation side to come up with new technologies uh, all the time. So we are developing 
new uh, types of technologies to allow us to better classify our customers' visitors to be able to distinguish bots from humans and good bots from bad bots. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder, and we are uh, we use cutting edge technology to be ahead of the pack in that sense. Let's talk a little bit about our content delivery capabilities. Um, so Encapsula is built on top of a CDN platform. We have 28 POPs worldwide, uh, which allows us to accelerate traffic for our customers, both in terms of uh, caching. So for example, if your origins are in the US, but your customers are worldwide, uh, we can cache content uh, uh, globally and serve it closer to your end users uh, to allow uh, uh, faster uh, page load times and also uh, uh, decrease or take some of the load uh, from your uh, web application servers. Uh, Encapsula has built a few very advanced systems. They are actually based on experience we had with our security algorithms that allow us to also uh, uh, cache content that is usually uh, um, uh, described as dynamic, but is actually static. So uh, web servers sometimes are misconfigured and uh, define content which is actually static as dynamic, which has a huge impact on both page time and uh, also on the server load. Uh, Encapsula can detect that and actually uh, cache content that is cacheable, but was misconfigured on the web application servers. Uh, moreover, Encapsula can also uh, also allows customers to define caching policies, so define resources that are cacheable or not cacheable, and TTLs, etc., uh, directly on our portal. Um, load balancing and failover. Uh, Encapsula built. Uh, I think one of the most advanced load balancers uh, into our product. Uh, it's all proprietary. We, we built it ourselves. Um, and it can do all sorts of things. It can load balance traffic between web servers. It can load balance traffic between data centers. It can fail over uh, traffic between servers and data centers. Um, and uh, it's all being done on layer 7, which is very unique. I mean, you can find uh, uh, load balancers such as the F5 uh, local traffic manager or the Citrix uh, uh, load balancer that can do layer 7 load balancing between origin servers at the same data center. But all of the, data, all, all of the load balancers that you will find out there load balance traffic between data centers using DNS. And DNS is not a very good way to load balance traffic between data centers. DNS was not built to serve as a load balancing uh, uh, protocol. It was built to do DNS uh, uh, queries. And it has a lot of limitations, like TTLs. Even if you set a very short TTL, other caching DNS servers on the way for ISPs or others uh, may decide that the minimum TTL would be uh, 30 minutes or 60 minutes, hence limiting your uh, flexibility in terms of switching traffic over between servers and data centers. And also, when a data center goes down, traffic will keep pounding this data center for a long time before uh, being switched over to another data center. Encapsula makes decisions on the single HTTP request level and everything is instantaneous, and all decisions are made uh, uh, instantaneously and allow us to react very quickly to changing uh, conditions like a data center that goes down. So just to sum up, Encapsula uh, now has around 100,000 customers, over 2 terabits per second uh, network capacity, mitigation capacity, actually. Um, we are the only leader, as mentioned earlier, the only leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for two consecutive years. We are the leaders in the Forrester Wave 
uh, uh, report uh, for DDoS protection. Uh, I think this is the leading product in the market, uh, at least uh, at the time being. These are some, some of our uh, leading brands. We have many, many more. Um, so let's talk a little bit about PCI and data management. Uh, I wanted to take this aspect because I think it's very relevant to the audience that we have on this uh, uh, webinar. So first of all, Encapsula is both uh, PCI Type 1 certified. It's also SOC 2 Type 1 certified. Uh, and it's going to be SOC 2 Type 2 certified by the end of this year. Uh, we are also working on our ISO 27001 certification. Uh, let's talk about storing data. So why do we store data on our uh, web, on our uh, uh, proxy servers and data servers? First of all, uh, we need this um, to be able to uh, research our traffic and allow our customers uh, to gain the benefits of us having so many customers on our service and be able to leverage uh, the advantages of having uh, this kind of uh, uh, huge network. Um, it's also uh, being used to uh, uh, help us classify users better. And it's also being used to be able to mitigate very sophisticated attacks that are launched at our customers. So, 99% of the attacks that are launched at our, at our customers are being mitigated by our systems automatically and require no intervention. However, the most sophisticated ones require uh, usually human intervention and our team of experts are handling those types of attacks and they need to have data in front of them to be able to uh, react to such attacks and mitigate them. Um, so let's talk about how we uh, uh, store the data on our system. First of all, we encrypt everything, both, date, both data that's in transit and data that is at rest. Uh, and it's absolutely isolated. So each and every customer in Capsula is a by nature multi-tenant platform. Uh, we handle each and every customer separately on a different account, and we store data for each and every customer separately using separate keys. Uh, so the system is very much uh, segregated. Um, another important thing is that a part of our certification processes, PCI and SOC 2, uh, requires us that only a very limited group of people within Encapsula have access to uh, those kinds of data or uh, uh, encryption keys. And only those people, a few people from within our organization, no one outside it, have access to this data. <clears throat> How do we store private keys of our customers? So Encapsula acts for our uh, web application, the, our customers' web applications, we act as a reverse HTTP proxy, which requires us to have our own set of uh, certificates and keys. Um, and we generate those keys for our customers, uh, uh, or our customers can upload their own uh, sets of certificates and keys to our system. Uh, all of the keys that are being uploaded by our customers or are being generated by us are being uh, kept uh, in, a in an encrypted mode uh, uh, using our own technologies that, are, that meet all the standards that are required in the industry. Um, and it allows, that, it allows us to keep keys for different customers encrypted separately and in different places uh, and allows complete segregation and privacy. Uh, regarding access to data, so um, 
again, we have uh, 24 by 7 knock and sock teams uh, that have uh, uh, that are using SIMS, uh, security information and events management solutions that monitor our system continuously 24 by 7, 365 days a year and they get alerted if anyone besides the people that are uh, allowed access to those keys is trying to access those keys or if any irregular behaviors take place. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, um, field masking. So both PCI and other compliance regulations require us to mask some certain fields uh, in the data that we are recording. So for example, by default, we will mask any PCI related field in the data that we store before we store it. For example, any credit card details, telephone numbers, uh, user credentials, etc., are being masked before they are recorded anywhere on our system. Um, so this is our default behavior, uh, but on top of that, our customers can also choose to customize their masking, field masking uh, uh, um, policies so that, for example, they can decide that they want to mask also, I don't know, any other type of data that we store on our system. Um, let's talk a little bit about data management. So we have quite a lot of customers. We are a distributed system. We have data centers across the world, and many of our customers have global presence and customers uh, all around the world. And there are different compliance regulations that are uh, coming up uh, in conversations with customers from different geographies or regions. Uh, for example, usually customers from specific industries like financials and government uh, from the EU uh, do not like data to be stored in the US especially after 9-11, uh, the Patriot Act, etc. So Incapsula allows its customers to limit traffic to specific regions. Uh, for example, we can limit traffic to the EU data centers only. We can only store data in specific regions like the EU or Canada. Canada, for example, which is also very uh, um, there are a lot of uh, privacy concerning laws uh, in, in Canada. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I think I covered almost everything I wanted. So if anyone has questions, I'll be happy, happy to take them. Thank you, Devere. Uh, I think you've uh, you've covered everything very clearly as we've uh, gone through the webinar. So I haven't had too many questions come through at all. Um, I'd just like to make sure that I share this screen one more time here, just a second. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, Devere, I want to tell you how much we appreciate your time. Uh, also wanted to just wrap up by uh, uh, mentioning again how uh, Network Consulting Services uh, is a partner of Imperva and can help with even uh, POCs of the Encapsula. It's a, it's a very simple system to put in. Uh, this is not a long, complex configuration, but particularly the fact that it's cloud-based. And it fits in nicely uh, with the rest of NCSI's services, uh, as well as being a, a security partner of Imperva, NCSI uh, brings a lot of technology around the, the PCI compliance world through privileged account management with CyberArk, uh, DLP capabilities with ForcePoint powered by Raytheon, uh, 
Uh, a lot of the requirements are also met through the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewalls and Endpoint Management through Landesk. And these are all how, if you take a look at all of the PCI requirements and look at them as, as different aspects of what are required to be able to meet those uh, regulations, then you need, you need to have Imperva as well as other pieces of it. And this is how NCSI fits into the mix. So uh, Devere and Todd, appreciate your time. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and end the webinar at this time. Thank you.